Barrett, we, we're not certain of his birth date, but it's about 1730. He's born in Dublin, in the Liberties of Dublin, and is apprenticed as a, to a stay maker. But he's then recorded at colouring in prints. You know, so quite lowly artistic beginnings. But by the late 1740s, he's working for the Leeson family down at Rossborough in Wicklow. The traditional view of him was that he went to London in about 1762 because he wasn't getting enough patronage. But that's not true. We now think he had a lot of commissions in Dublin, and it's very much from his Irish period that his work is most sought after. Perhaps unusually, he painted better here rather than in the great metropolis of London. And it's these lush, romantic Irish landscapes inspired by the scenery of County Wicklow. He was great friends of the Powers Courts and was patronised by Lord Powers Court and patroned his domain and the famous waterfall. But it's these views of Wicklow with these rich green, the lush verdure of Ireland that are most sought after by collectors. And this is a particularly fine example. But in about 1762, he moves to London. He exhibits Irish views in the Society of Artists in the late 1760s and then in 1768-69 is elected one of the foundation members of the Royal Academy when it's set up by George III. One of only 40 artists to the new body and one of two Irish artists with Nathaniel Hone. His great friend James Barry, perhaps with forgivable hyperbole, described Barrett as a, a greater genius than Claude. This would be a standard big picture, you know, but he liked to paint on a big scale. You know, his landscapes have a certain monumentality and they can take that scale. That he's an ambitious artist and he frames the composition with these repoussoir trees. He has a very typical treatment of leaves, which he picks out leaves with a dot of the brush, which could be seen to an extent here. He was critiqued by a rival for what was called a spinach and eggs technique, that you, know, you could just see little dots of spinach, and you can see that very nicely here. The figures are there in the foreground with a chromatic range of red. It's the only red in the picture, and a diff very different blue from the sky as highlights to draw the eye into the picture at the very front of the picture, plain. I mean, they are there to catch the eye and then to lead the picture back into the distance. Barrett likes, in the Claudian tradition, likes these framing trees on either side, often this bit of water in the middle and then a lovely view off into the distance. And I do think that they are very much the Irish hills. We're so used to seeing those blue mountains in the distance, which becomes a constant within Irish landscape painting for the next 200 years. People always like to see the sugar loaf in the distance. I, I think it might be more generic. He tends not to be topographically specific, but almost all his works from this period are inspired at one level or another from the Irish, and particularly the Wicklow landscape. We like to think, and collectors certainly would take the view, that his early period in Ireland, when he was inspired by the lush verdure of Wicklow, of the scenery of the Powers Court domain, is where he, he produced his finest works.